If you've played Tears of the Kingdom, you've definitely seen this item. A spirit orb. I mean, a light of blessing. It's a key item that you get at the end of every single shrine. What does it do? It gives you more key items. In my last video, I was able to beat the entire game with only key items. Yes! And 30 hours of my spare time. I had to beat a few shrines to do that. So naturally somebody commented, can you beat all the shrines with only key items? I don't know how many shrines even are there. There's 152 shrines? Do you really expect me to go out there and spend 30 more hours of my life only beating the shrines with key items? Well, if you just came here for the answer, it's not possible. Out of 152 shrines, we were only able to get 151. We are one away. But to understand how we got there, we gotta go back to the beginning four because we already did the Great Sky Island shrines and I'm not gonna go over those again. <sighs> We're back. We're back in hell. Everyone was like, don't you hate this challenge? And I'm like, yeah, but I also kind of love it, dude. This challenge picks up right after I beat the game with only key items. So I'm gonna use the same save. I'm also gonna be using the exact same rule set from that video. I'm not allowed to pick up armor, bows, shields, weapons, materials, food, or zone eye capsules. We're only allowed to use key items. I've already basically picked up every key item that I can possibly get in the last video. So let's go over what we do have in our inventory. This is never gonna change. We got all the runes, the paraglider, and some sages. All this other stuff is junk. Allow me to introduce you to the four shrine categories. Blessings, puzzles, combat training, and proving grounds. Blessings are super simple. Once you get in the shrine, you're guaranteed the spirit orb. Though a lot of them do have you do puzzles before you get in the shrine. For instance, this first shrine requires me to bring a shrine crystal to the shrine's location, which can be made very easy by doing a glitch called auto build canceling, which can let an object hover near Link without him actually holding it. I do it by pressing B and Y at the right time while auto building. Now it's in a ghost state where it follows Link around. It's quite useful for those shrine crystals. Also, don't don't worry about the torch it looks like I'm holding, I'll come back to this later. Now let's talk about puzzle shrines. This is the most common shrine you'll find. How are we gonna activate this? Oh god, I thought this was just gonna be easy. Can we hit it with this? Okay, we can activate it with that. These shrines are like wild cards. They all propose different problems that I had to use different solutions to solve. No! For almost all the puzzle shrines, I would abuse Ultra Hand, Recall, and Ascend. Since I couldn't turn on Zona devices by hitting them, I'd have to do weird stuff like this. Oh, that's so in. No shot I missed this. Let's go. We were cruising. I just got my 10th shrine done, but number 11 was going to be a little tricky. No. Combat training with no combat. Let's talk about combat training shrines. The whole idea behind these shrines is to teach you how to use your equipment. There's one for throwing, there's one for sneak striking, there's one for shooting a bow. It's very straightforward, but I think you already see the issue. We have no way to kill this enemy. The only thing in this room is a shield and a sword. What, what if I spam the Y button and like have this drop on him as I do the flurry rush? Recall it. Hit the recall. I didn't even damage them. I can't. I can't do it, guys. These shrines were a complete brick wall. It turns out that these enemies only take damage from the way they're intended to. So even if I was able to scam this flurry rush tutorial, that wouldn't solve the other 10 combat shrines we have to do. So I went back and did some normal puzzle shrines. Bro, I'm telling you, you can solve every puzzle in this game with recall and, and uh, ultra hands. And then I found this one. I didn't know it at the time, but I was walking into my first proving ground shrine. Oh no. This is a shrine where we have to kill enemies with nothing. Proving ground shrines are very similar to combat training shrines, but there's one key difference. The enemies in the proving ground shrine can be killed in any way possible. Let's grab it, move it. There we go. Easy as a piece of cake. Oh, that felt good, baby. So some of the proving ground shrines are possible, but that was only because we had a spike ball that we could just grab and then drop on enemies' heads. Not every proving ground shrine has that. So I knew we were gonna have to get into glitches. Let me talk about that torch I told you about earlier. This is Todd, Todd the torch. He's from an alternate save file where I did pick up items. This is a glitch called Zuggling. It allows you to have weapons or shields tied to Link without actually picking them up. To do it, first you need to pick something up. Look, I know how it sounds. Hear me out though. You can zuggle it by causing a desync between the menuing and the real world. This confuses the game into holding our weapon even though it's not equipped. But the best part is, if we load back to our safe before we picked anything up, let's call it our clean save, 
The weapon is still zuggled to Link, so I keep my manual save always dirty. That's where I can pick up items. And I keep all the auto saves clean. That's the save we want to be all the shrines with. The obvious question is, if I zuggle something into my clean save, then does it appear in my inventory? Do I unlock that category? The answer is no. Even though it looks like Link is holding a torch, he's actually not. See, when I click Y, he doesn't actually attack. And if I pause and I spam L, there's nothing to the left because we haven't unlocked any other inventory categories. So on the surface, this zuggling glitch is pretty useless. But if we combine it with another glitch, it becomes way more useful. Let's come back to this later. The main thing is that if you see me holding a weapon or a shield, I'm not actually holding it. It's kind of just glitched onto my back or my hand. Without a weapon, we can't sneak strike this dude. It's impossible. Yeah. No sneak strike option. Yeah, it doesn't give me an option. The shrines were going fine, but internally, I was kind of feeling like shit because the combat training shrines and the proving ground shrines were kind of just a brick wall staring me in the eyes. And if I didn't solve that, then, you know, I'm not going to do many shrines. That's two categories. So I started thinking. In my previous video, I had to figure out a way to get to the fire temple without burning alive. One of the ideas was to use a glitch called gas, which can keep a zona device permanently on, but it uses your battery cell. And once you run out of battery, the glitch is over. You can't save it, it's done. So that kind of seemed useless for getting to the fire temple since we didn't really have a lot of battery. But shrines on the other hand, Shrines are very different. When you're in shrines, you have infinite battery. In fact, it doesn't even use your battery cell. So maybe gas was actually useful in this case. I really don't want to deep dive into how gas works because I don't really understand it and it's super complicated, but I'll give you the cliff notes. Right before you're about to fuse something to your shield, you can interrupt that process by switching shields. This is known as fuse entanglement. When we use the shield in our hand, it'll activate the zone device on the ground. Now we fuse the zone device to a weapon and drop the fuse entangled shield into the hole. The switch won't render anything in that hole unless we go down there, but the shield is also still down there. Since we're not down there, the game unrenders it very quickly if we just walk away. And you see the zone device disappear. If we attack now and then walk back to where it renders, the zone device is now permanently on. That's gas. Now, obviously, this whole setup uses plenty of items, which is why we use zuggling to bring it back to our clean save without picking up anything. So the question now is, what do we want to gas into our clean save? Maybe a big wheel would deal damage to enemies. Nope. What about a hydrant? I don't know where I was going with this one. Might be useful later, though. I tried a whole bunch of things and came up dry. I asked around and I got a DM back about hydro clipping. I didn't know much about it, but it turns out it uses a gassed hydrant on a weapon to clip you through the ground. I think you see where I'm going with this. If we could clip through this tiny ass wall, we would just skip the construct entirely and not even have to mess with them. But of course, there's issues. There's three ways to clip with hydro clipping. Flurry rushing, mounting a horse, and conveniently for us, crouching in shrines. It works by using recall while holding a gassed hydrant. The water in the hydrant is still trying to leave, but it can't because we froze time with recall. So when we crouch, it cancels the recall and causes a massive lag spike. If the lag spike's big enough, he can clip right out of bounds. Problem is, that clips you through floors, not walls. There's nothing down there but a big ass void. There's no staircase to get us back over the shrine again. So we're making progress, but we haven't solved it yet. Oh, this is one of those shrines. God, this is awful. <laughs> I hope they don't one shot me. They might. Another proving ground shrine and like technically possible with the spikes. Yes, but I had a better idea in mind. Wait. Guys, I have an idea. There was an old theory about having a permanent laser gassed onto our back. Since I could gas almost any zone device and then zuggle that into our clean save, maybe that would solve our proving ground shrine. So I tried a flame emitter. Oh my god, the damage. Oh my god, this is so much better damage than anything we've ever had. Let's go. Jeez, it still sucks though. <laughs> I wish there was a way I could have multiple of these on my weapon at the same time. Let me try something. I wanted to see if it was possible to stack multiple gassed items in Link's hand. We unequip everything, and now we don't have to fuse overwriting the previous one, and it shouldn't break it. There's no way. Holy shit. Boys, we might have just found something big. Like I'm talking a way to deal serious damage. So my next question, <laughs> what stacks? To figure out what stacks with gas, I could do it one by one and take notes of what each effect is, but that just sounds kind of boring. So I gassed as much bullshit as I could fit onto a stick and it looked like this. Bro, it looks like they're all going. Oh my God. I see the shock. I see the fire. I see the water. I see the frost. Holy shit. It's so good. It's so good. 
It's so good. And I can run with it, dude. I can run with it. <laughs> oh, that's so good. We have damage and it actually is good damage for the first time. Your equipment will be returned to you. Bro, what equipment? What is it gonna give me? Oh, great. The same exact shit. This amalgamation was really good, but I had no idea the extent of its capabilities. Oh, we died? When did we die? Wait, we did the shrine. What? No shot I have to do it again. There's no shot I have to do it again. Dude, I did it. I did the shrine. I did it. I got scammed. I mean, I did a bunch of shrines and then I got killed and it just loaded me back to like five shrines ago. Like, what? Did the game just stop making saves? Thought it was just like a weird bug or something, but then it happened again. I'm so stupid. I hate the saves in this game. I have to redo the shrine again now, don't I? And then it got a whole lot weirder when I voided out in the shrine. Did you catch that? Let me show you a side-by-side. -side. In my case, Link is spawning back at the beginning of the shrine instead of the platform I jumped off of. This led me to believe that Link's location tracker is broken. The way the game's supposed to work is that every frame that Link is on the ground, the game updates Link's location. That way, if you make a manual save on, let's say, this hill, then when you load that manual save back, it checks those coordinates, and that's how it knows where to put you. But for some reason, when we did gas, those coordinates stopped getting saved. It's almost like the devs didn't intend for us to walk around with this thing. Alright, this is gonna go from a neat quirky glitch to something seriously insane, depending on where this autosave takes us. I was starting to think that I discovered a wrong warp by accident, which would be crazy because it would solve a lot of our biggest shrine issues. For instance, Shwari Walk Shrine is deep in the Yiga Cave, which they won't let you enter unless you wear Yiga armor. The Pumke, it's a shrine in the Korok Forest where you need to deliver five golden apples to Damya in order for her to give you the shrine crystal. Utoja's Shrine, doesn't even exist in the world until you throw a spear through a hole in a cave. All of these are blessing shrines, which means if we can get inside of them, they're guaranteed spirit orbs, but getting in them seemed impossible, so I deemed them the impossible shrines. Having a wrong orb to get into these shrines would make them possible. So yeah, you could say finding a wrong orb would be a pretty big deal. I, I don't know what possibilities there are. Genuinely, I'm so curious. There's really two that I see. I have the manual save inside of the shrine. Option A is that when I get my next manual save, it loads me into the shrine. Option B, it teleports us to a completely random location. It's not random, but rather it's taking the coordinates of the shrine into Hyrule's world and teleport me there. That one's not useful. So I started experimenting around, died in the overworld, and it spawned me. There's no way! What? I can't believe it. I actually can't believe it. Dude, is this just it? it wrong warped us back into the shrine. This is a big deal now. No. It's not, because this was a glitch that was already discovered by Flash and Puke. It's called gas warping. And the thing about gas warping is that yes, it does get you through one map to another, but you have to have been to that other map first. I did have a theory that maybe if I could create a fake autosave, then maybe it would default to the manual saves location, but I could never make a fake autosave. So it's a roller coaster today. Feeling on top of the world, really. Thinking that we have it, thinking that we have the solution. But there's no ever, there's never an easy way, is there? We keep on chugging, we keep on trying, we keep on- For number 50, I wanted to solve a big one. This is Mimosic Shrine. It's a blessing, but like you could probably imagine, getting it open is quite challenging. The shrine crystal is buried deep in a fiery cave that without the proper equipment, we're just gonna burn to death. That's not the hard part though. The hard part is that the crystal is actually the heart of an Igneo Talus, and we can't deal damage to an Igneo Talus, even with this monstrosity. We need physical damage. The obvious answer is Minoru, one of the three sages I got in my last video, but her arms are too short. And when you get in Minoru, your hitbox becomes the size of Minoru, which is problematic because we have to do this hitless. Not because I want to, but because if we get hit, we're gonna start burning alive. Stop, I'm gonna burn to death. You see? You see that? It's so annoying. It's so annoying. I, like, Link was clearly in the water, dude. We got no flame armor. We got no flame resistant food. The only thing that's keeping us alive is the hydrant on our amalgamation. That's also zuggled. I know it's getting confusing, but all you really have to know is that we haven't picked up any key items yet. I thought cannons might do the trick, but we have like no battery and it does very bad damage. This is brutal. Minoru is terrible for this. How, how can I kill him without Minoru? I looked back at the Zoya devices that we could gas and one of them stuck out to me. The big wheel. When this thing spins, it does physical damage. How much? One. 
Yeah, one per hit. On the bright side, we can zuggle more than one of these. I was able to get like eight, plus the hydrant that we're zuggling so we don't burn to death. Basically, by shaking Link back and forth, the water would spray up in the air and it would hopefully land on us. Easier said than done, but doable, yeah. It's not great, but it's damn. Come on. My strategy was get lucky. If I see an opening, go for it. And if I don't, try not to get hit because then I'll burn to death. But it still happened a lot. Luckily for me, the Hydrant actually stunned the Talus, so it gave me a great opening to get on top of his head and start dealing damage to the heart. Our wheels were doing... something. Kinda. Oh my god. <laughs> we're dealing damage! Yes! Oh, that's the big one. Yep, that's the big one. That's the big one. Okay, I'm going in. I'm going in. Go in while he strikes. I don't think he can do that attack like two times in a row. Come on! One more! One more! I... Does that stun you? Please stun you. Oh, it stunned you. Come on, come on. Hit, 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 hit. Please, 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 just do it, just do it. No. I hate those... Yes! Yes! Let's go! Oh my god. I wish I had a heart rate monitor on right now, dude. Yeah, I did a first try. I'm a bit of a gamer, what can I say? They call me Burrito First Try because I'd be first trying these bosses, man. Dude, I can't tell you how many times I've lost that fight. Also, some good news is that this wheel contraption actually turns on zone devices, so we can turn on things now. With some problems. Gosh, stop turning off and on. No, just keep going, guys. Please. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> okay. It's not perfect. Gosh, it's so hard to keep it on. <laughs> so to stay on. I've spent way more hours than I'd like to admit trying to turn on zoning devices with this stupid ass wheel. It's a pain, but we got a lot of shrines done. Let's turn in some spirit orbs. While I'm trading those in, I just want to let you know, I just finished streaming being in the game with no key items or regular items. That's the most insane challenge I've ever attempted in a video game, and we're making a video about it, and I'm super excited. So if you do want to see it, please subscribe. We just hit 10k. I really appreciate every single one of you. Thank you. Back to the video. Fifteen towers and we got... Fourteen. Yeah. Some of these were tricky, but definitely doable. And then we just hit this one where this guy offers you food. Or I guess he gives it to you because it's not a choice. What happened to consent, Nintendo? <sighs> Dude, we can't do all towers. All towers is impossible. The only way we can avoid picking up his food is if we have a full inventory. I think you see the issue with that. Back to... Guys, I've been playing around with ways to do this shrine. Now, we already have a way to clip out of bounds, but if you remember, we don't have any way to get back up. I was kind of desperate for a solution, so I started trying gas combinations on my shield instead of my weapon. Again, this is zuggled equipment from an alternate save that's actually not interactable. So what's the point of having a non-interactable shield on my back? Now, what's interesting about this that I've noticed, something pretty damn cool. If I get onto my paraglider, I can go upwards however high I want, basically. Kinda cool, right? Here's my plan. I want a hydro clip out of bounds in the shrine to get underneath it. From there, we're gonna use our new paracopter to fly back over top the shrine out of bounds. Then we're gonna hydro clip a second time on top of the shrine to get back in bounds and skip right into the final room. Look, it's a crazy theory, but dude, I have so much hope on it. The thing that I'm struggling with is trying to get both to interact at the same time. My plan hinges on having a gassed hydrant on my weapon and a gassed fan on my shield. Getting both at the same time isn't as easy as you might think. Like this is this is the problem right now, is that I can't have both. But I have a theory for how I could do it actually. I just it just popped in my head. Fuse this to that. No. Okay, I wanna try another thing. I wanna try not juggling the weapon. As soon as I fuse this, it's gonna break. No. 
Interesting. Use that. Wait. Could this be it? We do have double gas right now. Dude, I spent like five hours on this earlier today and I made no progress. I'm so glad that I could catch, catch this on stream. Okay, look, it's all theory. It's all theory, but this could work. Let's try to time how long we should lag spike this for. If we overdo it, we might crash the game. Starting it now. But then you have to do all this for the, all the combat shrines. Hey, but if it makes it possible, dude, if it makes it possible, it's so worth it. To do all the shrines item list, that's pretty freaking cool. We're done, crouch. Clip, 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 clip. Oh, it wasn't enough. But you saw him clip. You saw him clip a little bit. <gasps> we got it. We got it. And we're going up. We're going up. Yes. Okay, we have to get back in bounds now. Wait, no, is there a wall? Is there a ceiling? Please don't let there be a ceiling. There cannot be a roof, though. If there's a roof, this is dead. Oh, no. Is this a hard roof? Oh, no. Come on, please. Opening, 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 opening. <laughs> Come on, please. Oh, my God. Is this how we do it? Okay, we need to clip back and bounce. We need, to be, we need to make sure that we can clip back and bounce with this. Come on now. <laughs> yes! Yes! Yes, dude, we did it. The theory is proven. You know, let's, let's do this on the actual save, bro. And we're back in. It's so easy to get back in from there. Guys, I gotta say too, like this is so good, not even just for the trial shrines, but literally any shrine. Now you might be thinking, doesn't this trivialize almost every shrine? I mean, if we could just clip down and then go back up and clip back in from the top, doesn't that work for every shrine? Yes-ish. It does work for like almost any shrine, but we have to get inside of it first. And remember those impossible shrines we talked about? Yeah, we still can't get into those. That doesn't solve that problem. And every shrine that I have to do this for takes like 10 minutes to set up. So it's not super fun and I'd much rather not have to do it. But if it gets us through the challenge, it gets us through the challenge. Now that we've pretty much solved the interior of shrines, we gotta figure out the shrines that we can't just get into. Korok Forest has three shrines that we need. These shrines suck, but I'll talk about it later. To even access these shrines, you need to save Korok Forest. From depression? I'm not quite sure. But yeah, I'll help you guys. What do you need? Nope. 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 Gloom hands and item lists should never be in the same goddamn sentence, but I gotta do this shit. Saddle the f*** up. Cause there's two parts to this fight. We have to first kill the gloom hands and then Phantom Ganon spawns. And if we die at all on that, then we have to restart from the beginning. Not bad, not bad. Okay, and they don't- they don't kill me, they just knock me off of Minoru. No, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead. Whistle to bring Minoru? Nice! Good damage. Good damage, Minoru. Does this knock him? Oh my god, he's so much damage. He does so much damage. No, 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 I can't see, I can't see. Damn it, I can't see. Time for the amalgamation. Pull it, attack with it, walk back, zuckle it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's see how this does against the hands. Whoa, 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 whoa. Put the bow away. Put the bow away! Don't want these, bro. Oh, oh. My sages are doing work. Holy shit. Yes! There it is! And now that we saved Korok Forest, we can take a look at the three shrines around here. Remember I said they sucked? Well, one of them is a Talus Shrine. We love those, and the other one is...
It's one of the shrines where you need to bring a shrine crystal to the shrine's location. The shrine's location is actually very accessible. In fact, the shrine crystal is like right next to it. The problem is that Damia, the NPC holding the crystal, won't let you move it unless you give her five golden apples. Generally, you're supposed to follow this path full of enemies and at the very end, there's a bunch of golden apples that you can grab. Once you have the five golden apples in your inventory, you just go back, talk to her, and she'll give you the crystal. Now it's free to move. And you just plop it in the shrine and get your blessing. It's such a simple problem and yet I just don't really know how I can solve it, so let's come back to this one later. With the new hydro clipping and paragliding technique, it made a lot of the shrines that felt completely undoable very possible. That got me through all the combat training shrines. I also learned how to make a horizontal recall elevator, which allowed me to travel almost anywhere. I think that'll make it. I'm gonna trust it. I can sprint off and paraglide, I'm sure. Yep, we're good. That pretty much solved all the puzzle shrines. And for proving ground shrines, we would pretty much just use... Where are you going? Where are you going, dude? Where are you going? So we were knocking out shrines like... 99 shrines! We gotta celebrate the big hundred with an impossible shrine. So I'm just gonna try knocking and see what they say. I have nothing to say to those not of the Yiga. So the shrine is in this room. The interesting thing about this shrine is that it already exists in the world, unlike our other two impossible shrines. This shrine is just not accessible. It's in the Yiga area and we need to be wearing Yiga armor to get into that room. Kind of. I did some testing on an alt save and it turns out you can actually be in that shrine room completely naked. The problem is, how do we get to that shrine without using the door? Because the door, he just tells us to leave. So if we could just clip into that room, we'd be set. So far, we know two methods of clipping with no items. Hydro clipping and shrines by crouching, which only works in shrines, and auto boat canceling ghost steering sticks, which works in the overworld, but it isn't super reliable. Let's just try clipping. Ooh. Okay, so we're in. I see the shrine back there, actually. I see the green hue of it. Oh, no. And it turns out this is gonna be a lot trickier than I initially thought. The closer I got to the shrine, the more glitchy things would get. But to understand why, let me show you a mod. This is Ultra Cam. I can move the camera wherever I want. If we go right above the shrine room, you can see it's completely covered in water from the cave above it. The problem is, if I were to teleport Link here, there's no way I can get under this water. I could try to go to the end and then glide back into the shrine, but Link's not supposed to be under the water, so it's always gonna pull him back up. TLDR just means that we can't get to the shrine out of bounds. We have to go from inbounds to inbounds. So we need to clip downwards. And the problem with ABCs is that they bring us up and they crash your game so much. This is first try recording this. This is just dead. Audible cancels aren't gonna work. We're gonna need some other way to clip. I need to go down. Wait, could I juggle overload clip? Could that go through saves? That's a that's a way to clip down. Back when Zelda speedrunning and Tears of the Kingdom was just starting out, there was a very broken clipping glitch called Zuggle Overload Clipping. The premise of it is very simple. That was weird. If you just keep juggling things on top of each other, eventually the switch's memory will become overloaded, and when you get on a steering stick, okay, there he goes. The best part about it is that it doesn't stop clipping until you get off the steering stick, and it never crashes your game, which is really nice. So my plan was to do a Zuggle Overload Clip in this cave and then drop straight into the shrine room, but we can't pick up steering sticks, so I'm gonna have to slot them in. Slotting combines fuse entanglement with juggling to traverse objects through saves. In this case, our object is the steering stick. Let's do like 20, dude. Let's just go overkill. So I'm overloading the Switch's memory right now. Well, folks, here goes nothing. Let's just think about what we have to do right now. We're going to step onto the steering stick. We're gonna start clipping really, really fast into the ground. I don't know when I'm gonna be in that room, but I have to kind of predict. If I let it go too long, I'll clip right through it and I'll miss my window. Let's try. Damn it, we're not overloaded enough. Maybe a bit more? The game's getting really slow. All right, let's hope. Dang it. I wonder if it's because this is not a normal steering stick. I wonder if this is because it's a slotted steering stick. Surely I just need more juggling, right? I'm juggling the shit out of this. If this doesn't clip, then I don't think that anything else will. Which kind of scares me. I went back on the dirty save to get some new steering sticks. For these kinds of walls, I would just use audible cancels because it's just super easy. Wait, what? You guys see that? That ABC was like a Zuggle overload clip instead of bringing me through the wall. It brought me straight down. That's the intended consequence of what we're trying to get. It seemed like my auto build canceled steering stick was acting like a normal steering stick, even though it was in a ghost version. Yeah, that's that's the clip we're looking for. Wait, so if we were to load the other save and try to ABC clip, would that just bring us down? Everything's worth a shot. Don't fail me now, baby. 
Yes! Yes! We're in! And boys, it's a blessing. What happens if I open this door? Hmm, I feel like I know you from somewhere, but I'm drawing a blank. But who you are is not important. He doesn't care? He just doesn't give a shit? Well, with two more impossible shrines and 50 more possible shrines, it's time for one last day. As I was cleaning out the rest of my shrines, I found one where we had to use our paracopter again. No biggie, right? I'm used to this. You're supposed to shoot that with a bow. You're supposed to go beep and it opens the gate. So we need a paracopter. This wasn't unusual. I mean, there were plenty of shrines that you had to use the paracopter for to solve them. It wasn't just the combat training shrines, but something was different about this one. Stamina might be an issue for this one. I hope it's not, cause that's a problem I haven't thought about. <laughs> this is a very, very tall shrine. Usually the shrines are not that tall. It's gonna be close. Unfortunately, even with full stamina, Link ain't good enough for that shit, so we gotta figure out something else. I got back out of bounds and started looking for places for Link to stand on. You know, to refill his stamina. Best thing I could find was literally just the opening room. We can get on that for like the- Whoa! Okay, we're on our last bar, fellas. We're on our last bar. Higher, just a little higher, bro. Just a little higher. Oh, dude, I think I see a platform I could rest on. If I could just get to that platform, please tell me this is inbounds. Please tell me this platform's inbounds. Please, 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 please. Yes! Take the L if you're a hater, if you did not believe. Let's go! That's a good stir for the top 10, I like that. Come on, Link, you can clip this. I'm not clipping through this. Imagine I can't clip back in. Clipping back in is usually way easier, believe it or not. Because the game wants Link to be inbounds, so it tries really hard to keep him inbounds. I've never had it not clip first try getting back inbounds. I've never had that. It must be a really thick ceiling. No matter how many times I tried to clip here, it wouldn't clip. Yeah, it's a bit of a time waste. Hey, but that happens. We run into issues. Hey, shit happens, and I was out of ideas, but chat had ideas. Somebody said, can you call Fuse and Tangle Zuggle a save and then load that? What the f are you saying? You're putting words into a sentence. None of them make any sense. Somebody did have a good idea though. Gas a cannon to a weapon. Okay, that's a problem, guys. It didn't even shoot. Gas it to a shield. That's a good point. If this doesn't gas, then we got a problem. Never mind. We're good, guys. Crisis averted. <laughs> Please. It doesn't mean anything unless it stays gassed through saves. <laughs> oh, let's go! Yes! I was not a believer, I gotta be honest. I did not think the perma bat cannon was real. The perma bat cannon is, is as real as it gets, fellas. Oh, we did it. It's a little hard to aim. <laughs> it's not that easy to aim. Wait, if I, if I L, Z, L, he like aims it more up. <laughs> That's so funny, dude. If I do Z, L, he like, he, it tilts it a little bit. You see that tilt? God, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. Great start to top 10 shrines, by the way. There it is. Unfortunately, anything gassed to my shield won't stay with me, so I can't just bring this to the rest of my shrines. Or at least that's what I thought. Pretty much everything left we need the paracopter for. <laughs> so let's get the paracopter again. Let's make a manual save. Or wait, 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 I need to make the manual save in the shrine. If you're wondering why it has to be in the shrine, I'll show you. The cannon on my back seems to be running for infinite, right? But it's using battery, which is fine. But let's say I want to bring this back into the shrine. I mean, you could probably already guess, like common sense. Big surprise, the cannon stops going. What the hell? The cannon doesn't stop? What? Why does the fan stop but not the cannon? Hold on a second. What? There's no way. How is this possible? <laughs> Everything I thought I knew is wrong. <laughs> Why does it work? How does that work? I don't... We can do this shrine then. We can literally do this shrine then. Zoner is smoking crack apparently, which I don't think surprises anybody, but like probably way more than I initially thought. Oh my God, it's still on. Oh my God, we can do this shrine. Oh wow, it's fake. 
So this is like a troll shrine where you're supposed to shoot fire arrows, the torches, and that's literally it. But we got a cannon now. We got, a, we got an angle link really nicely here. Oh my god, that was a perfect angle. That's such a good solution to this. I love this cannon. I love this cannon, bro. And we can do the ones where we need a weapon now too. All right, guys, we're getting close. We're eight shrines away, and four of those shrines are just annoying paracopter ones that I put off because, quite frankly, it sucks to set up. But we're just gonna fly over it with our paracopter. That takes us down to four shrines, and every single one of them is a blessing. Two of them are talus shrines, and two of them are impossible shrines. You know I'm saving best for last, so let's do some taluses. Somebody said if you just like have them walk towards you and then let them walk away, the shrine rock just drops in the floor. Hello. I'm gonna go in this cave. All right, so as he's sitting down, am I supposed to go now? <gasps> what? <laughs> Hell yeah, we don't have to fight the Talus. That's so nice, dude. Thank you. You saved like three hours of my life. Final three now. There's seven wheels there. Or at least there should be. If I messed up, there might be six, there might be five. How much damage do we do? Good damage. Really good damage. This is free. This is free, dude. The wheels are putting in work. God damn. Please game crash. I don't know if the game's gonna crash. Let's go. This may be the last shrine we ever complete, guys. This is very likely to be the last shrine we can possibly do without picking up anything. G freaking G. 150 shrines. Let's, let's savor this shrine, guys. Let's savor it. There it is. 100 and Utoja Shrine. What makes this shrine so difficult? It gives you some spears. You're supposed to throw the spears into that hole. Ultra handing them in does not work. Why? Because when you throw an object in this game, it gets its own state. I believe it's just called like throne state. So we need to figure out a way to get that throne state on something without throwing it. That's not it. You have to throw it into the hole while standing on this platform, which causes a big problem because one of my main methods of trying to solve this was to try to get a Lazalfos to throw our spear for us into that hole. Yeah, my main plan was to get a Lazalfos to pick up that Zora spear and throw it into the hole. Supposedly any low level Lazalfos can pick up any spear and actually just throw it. And maybe that would give the spear the throne state? Calling this a long shot would be putting it mildly. We're talking about going out into Hyrule and finding a Lazalfos, guiding him back down into a cave where he's gonna pick up a Zora spear and try to throw it into a tiny hole while we're standing on a little circular platform. Luckily for me, there was a Lazalfos camp that wasn't too far away from our cave. <laughs> Jeez, what a snipe. We need to see those snipes into the hole. Does anyone know how we disarm those alphas? Because we need to we need to disarm him. He's disarmed. Whoa, 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 wait, pick these up, pick these up, pick these up. We need to make sure he can only pick up our spear. I wanted to test all this stuff on a dirty save first because it's just so much more convenient. That's exactly what we want him to do with our Zora spear. That's exactly what we want him to do. You see, he just took the spear and he just chucked that shit in my ass. That's exactly what we want him to do with this. Pick up this spear, bro. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You won't. Pick it up. There you go. Come on. Don't throw it, don't throw it, don't throw it. He doesn't want to follow me anymore. No, 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 Come on, come on, keep coming. Keep coming! Why do you just leave? Don't go back. Don't go back. I'm right here. No, don't go back! Don't go back! Dude, even if I could get him to the cave, which is kind of a long shot, seemingly, but I don't even know if I could get him to throw the spear when I'm, like, right next to him. Because remember, I have to be on that platform. After about an hour of messing with the Lazalfos, I just gave up on that plan. It was not gonna work. I'm gonna look through the glitch spreadsheet. L sprinting, infinite damage, no anti-gravity, no new item resynching, a new item exchange, no extended blast, no extended blast, no extended sprinting, what is that? Proless storage makes it so that Link puts the weapon in an active state as for activation of Zona device at all times. So that's gas, basically. Hold R, open the rune ability, let go of R before you open the map, watch a memory, then load a save. If done properly, any Zona device fused to your weapon will become permanently active until Link fully holds your weapon to throw again.
What? The spear's over here? Wait, but did it actually get thrown or did it just like appear on the floor? So I actually got a spear to traverse saves by throw SLD or throw save load dupe. But when I would load the save, it didn't look like the spear was being thrown. It would just appear on the floor. It has a recall path. Maybe I was wrong though. Huh? Let's try that again. Wait. I swear I saw it fall. I swear I saw it fall. Somebody rewind it. Somebody tell me I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. This is looking like the real deal. So it's time to test it. Holy shit! Oh my god! I never even saw the spear, but you can see just as we loaded in, it lit up green. <laughs> Dubs in chat, please. That is 151. At the beginning of this video, I told you that I completed 151 shrines with only key items. That was true. But, and there's a pretty big damn butt coming, that might not be the case for very long. Let me tell you the story of the golden apple shrine. I saw three potential ways to break this shrine. Breaking the shrine crystal, breaking the NPC, or just breaking straight into the shrine. Wrong warping. I started by messing with the crystal. He just says no touching, that's mine. No matter what, this shrine crystal would not budge. The data mining team looked into this and they told me there's two parameters that keep the crystal static. So this crystal's completely unmovable. But then I had an idea, what if we used another shrine crystal? One that was more accessible, like the talus in the Korok forest. So I went to a backup before I killed that talus. And despawn. Wait, what? Bro, usually you can like never bring it this far from shrines. Supposedly, nobody's been able to bring the wrong shrine crystal to a shrine. That's because they have void out limits and they always void out before you make it to a different shrine. It's probably once you leave this area. Okay, okay. Are you gonna despawn? No? I guess because it's a talus shrine? Three, two, one. <laughs> Fuck. I spoke to a fellow glitch hunter, Timber, and he told me they have uh, parameters that lock them to specific uh, dungeon IDs. So messing with the shrine crystal was a bust. Let's try to break the NPC now. I took a look back at the glitch spreadsheet and found this. Hold smuggling. It basically lets Link hold items when he's not supposed to. This takes advantage of another glitch called minus dupe, which lets me throw negative amounts of golden apples. But I'm still holding five apples. And it can traverse saves. The issue I have is that even if I can get hold smuggled, I can't even reach my inventory to like pull the apples that are smuggled out. Because I can't, I can't can't go left. Basically, since I've only picked up key items in this category, there's no way I can access any of the inventory categories. To access the golden apples that I smuggled in, I need to be able to access my inventory. And I just can't do that without picking something up. Maybe a vendor would let me access my inventory? What? That's so weird. Can I actually sell these things? What did I sell? My pony points card? That'll be zero rupees? That's such a scam, bro. Can I actually sell my runes? Unfortunately, it wouldn't let me sell my key items, but pretty neat glitch. The only other idea I had for the NPC was to fly him away. And he's static, just like the shrine crystal. We can't break this NPC. That left us with one option, a wrong warp. If you go to your save data, and in one of the files, if you delete one of the autosaves, load into the shrine on one file. While in the shrine, load the file that you deleted the save. It'll load you into the shrine. It will? But you'll have, yeah, but you'll have absolutely nothing. And it, it's not on any save. Like, if you walk out the shrine, you're going to void out because the game thinks you haven't even completed GSI. But while you're in the shrine, you could do it, but you'll have no Ultra Hand. You'll have nothing. I mean, you'll have nothing. To summarize what he's saying, if I were to delete an autosave in my game files, then I could trick the game into loading me into the Papunke shrine. But that just feels kind of cheap. I mean, I know it's not a mod technically, but diving into the game files to delete an autosave is just cheating. So I called it. After about 36 hours of grinding this game, I was ready to trade in the rest of my spood orbs and call it a day, hoping maybe someday something would be discovered.
So I guess this means itemless pupunky is hypothetically possible. Yeah, it might actually work. The theory is pretty solid. The execution is just very difficult. It will be hard, but should be doable. Itemless pupunky has a chance, mostly because of arachnid, aragol, and timber. So thank you guys so, so much. Back when I was first messing with gas, I thought I might have found a wrong warp. But in order for the wrong warp to work, I would have needed a corrupted save, and I never found a way to get one. But somebody did. Ryan. If I could get to a memory location without using all my five save slots, then I could corrupt the save. This is what Timber was talking about. If you delete one of the autosaves, it'll load you into the shrine. But instead of deleting an autosave, we're just never gonna get it. Which means we have to start a completely new game with all the autosave slots not filled in. And we gotta reach memory location with only four autosaves. All the memories are on the surface, so we have to beat the Great Sky Island with only four autosaves. Which seems impossible, but Ergo and Timber found a way to do it. By clipping out of bounds in intro, we only get one autosave there. Then we'll get a new autosave for picking up the decayed Master Sword. That's two. Then we have to do cog skip skip and get a wing. And immediately land on it so we don't get the autosave. Avoid some more autosaves by the pure pad. And pretty much just never touch the ground from here on out. Because if we do, we'll get an autosave. We'll need to gather sticks, fans, and fuse. Once we get those items, we can set up gas. Gas prevents the game from autosaving. Except for when you activate shrines. So whenever we activate a shrine, we'll have to do a frame perfect backflip to avoid the autosave. The rest of the Great Sky Island should be pretty straightforward. We grab a memory, get some golden apples, open up the Papunke shrine and get the autosave inside of it, and the last step is to drown. By watching a memory while we're drowning, we can make a manual save in the game over screen. And that manual save has nothing tied to it, not even the location. So when it tries to load it, it'll load us into the shrine with nothing. But you'll have no ultra hand, you'll have nothing. I mean, you'll have nothing. That would be a big problem, but it's a blessing shrine, so we don't need anything. It's kind of the perfect shrine for this, but I'm not gonna do it. Not in this video. I want to stream it. Doing all the shrines itemless is a pretty big deal to me, so I want you guys to be there with me when I solve it. Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. I hope to see you there. I've also just finished trying to beat the game with no items or key items, and all I can say is... Yes! You might want to subscribe for that one. Mark, Swinney, Griffin, my members, thank you so much. I appreciate it. That's the end of the video. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.